Hi, my name is Seth Bloom and I'm with the law firm of Bloom Legal. There's been a lot of press around the summer about no refusal DWI and DUI checkpoints this year. Uh, to get started, I'm a criminal defense attorney here in the state of Louisiana. Primarily my practice is in the greater New Orleans area, although we do go to some of the outer parishes. Um, again, what I'm talking about today is general knowledge, so nothing I say here today should be taken as actual legal advice. If you have a DUI or a DWI, you need to have uh, an actual attorney review your specific case in your specific jurisdiction uh, so that you can get the best result. But generally speaking, uh, what was going on is, is the Constitution uh, allows for DWI checkpoints. This was challenged a number of years ago and they said as long as that they do public announcements they can have DWI checkpoints to try to enforce uh, drinking and driving laws, which for the most part are, 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 are good things. They keep our highways and our roads safe during busy holiday weekends. What this new refu the refusal issue is that keeps coming up is, is an interesting one. Basically, when the police would stop you for a checkpoint, they ask you for uh, your driver's license, your insurance, your registration, and then they look at you, they talk to you, and if they believe that you may be under the influence of drugs or alcohol, they can stop you and then they can uh, basically give you a uh, field sobriety test and usually they uh, their probable cause is something that you smell like alcohol, there's an open container in the car, your eyes look bloodshot, so there's some indication to them that you may be drinking or being on drugs. Once they decide that is a possibility, they give you field sobriety tests. They can make you walk the line, uh, they can make you hold up one foot, there's a number of tests. If these tests turn out to be positive or they believe that you are intoxicated or under the influence of drugs and alcohol, they can ask you to take a breathalyzer test, at least in the state of Louisiana. If you refuse to take that breathalyzer test, uh, pre presumably then they're not going to have chemical evidence against you. And that's why a lot of attorneys would recommend people not to take breathalyzer tests. Now in a lot of states, for instance the state of Louisiana, if you get convicted of a DWI and you refuse a breath test, the DMV has suspends your driver's license for two years if you lose your administrative hearing. And you may say, well, well how does that happen? because driving is a privilege. It is not a God-given or a constitutional right. It is a privilege issued by each state. So the state basically said, if you don't want to take our breathalyzer test, that's okay. Then we're just going to suspend your license for, if for instance, they just changed the law from one year in Louisiana to two years. When they, when they don't have that breath evidence against you, it's difficult to convict you for a DWI in many cases, because basically you can say, hey, I wasn't drinking. I don't care what that police officer says. These field sobriety tests are antiquated, which is partially true, because there's no evidence there whatsoever. There's no blood test, there's no urine test, there's no uh, breath test. So the government has wised up a little bit, and what they've started to do on these DWI no refusal weekends is they keep a judge either within, either actually out at the checkpoint, or they keep a judge near there on the phone in his chambers. So at 3 in the morning, what they will do is, if you get pulled over for DWI and you refuse to take the breathalyzer test, they actually will get a judge to issue a search warrant based on the fact of the, of the suspicion of being intoxicated and operating a motor vehicle. And that judge can issue a warrant to actually force them to take a sample from you, which usually is blood. So as gruesome as it sounds, they can actually tie you down handcuff you and actually take you to an emergency room where a nurse or some sort of a uh, medical technician will actually stick you in the arm and take a blood sample. That blood sample can later be used in court um, as evidence uh, for or against the fact that you may have been intoxicated while operating the vehicle. And this is certainly a more aggressive approach that jurisdictions are taking. So we thought we'd share with you a little bit about what a refusal weekend is and how DWI and DUI checkpoints work. Uh, again, my name is Seth Bloom with the law firm of Bloom Legal here in New Orleans, Louisiana. Give us a call, 504-599-9997. And again, we're just generally talking about uh, generalizations in the law and DWIs and DUIs. If you have a specific case with specific unique fact patterns, you need, you need to hire your own attorney in your own jurisdiction to get the very best uh, result uh, from your situation. Thanks a lot and have a great day.